Hello again, this is World Pastor Tony Alamo. This is program number 757. If you'd like to have a copy of it, Shannon will tell you how at the end of the program. Just let us know whether you want a CD or an audio tape. They're free, including postage and handling. Got a strong message, a continuation of the message of the book of Revelation. And I have music and letters. But right now, let's go to the throne of the Lord. I want to ask you, Lord, to continue anointing me. Let it be you that speaks through me, because only the Spirit, and no man can come unto you, but the Spirit draws us unto you. So let everyone have ears to hear what the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit that wrote the entire Bible. The Holy Spirit came down upon holy men of God and gave them the words to write. And therefore, there's no private interpretation of the Bible. There can be no guesswork or let me, uh, I think this is what it says, or I think, or I, this is my opinion of what it says. There's none of that that's acceptable by you, Lord. There's only one meaning of the Bible, and it's your meaning, the exact meaning. All right, so Father God, in the name of Jesus, anoint and rebuke Satan. Don't let them start this construction anymore during the time that I'm bringing this message. Close every door to Satan. Bind him, Lord, as I bind him on earth with your word. Your word binds Satan. And open up the Holy Spirit for me to be able to do the things that you want me to do. So many people, they just want money, money, money. But, Lord, I just want you to pour out your Holy Spirit and open my ears to the meaning of your word continuously. Give me a deeper, richer knowledge of your word. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray that souls can be saved in the church, the body of Christ, the real church of God, be strengthened. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right, here I am to sing for you. Uh, we recorded this a long time ago with the unprofessional musicians. It's called The Battle of Armageddon. There's a mighty battle coming, and it's well now on its way. It'll be fought at Armageddon, oh, it'll be a sad, sad day. In the book of Revelation, verse in chapter 6, They'll be gathered their great armies for the battle on that day. All the way from the gates of Eden to the battle of Armageddon, there'll be trials and tribulations, there'll be sorrow and despair. But he said, be not your trouble, for these things must come to pass. And your life will be eternal when you dwell with him at last. Turn the pages of your Bible. Start with chapter 24, read from 1 to 33. In the Savior's blessed word, he spake on earth, he prophesied. And he spoke of that great battle, and it's coming by and by. All the way from the gates of Eden to the battle of Armageddon, there'll be trials and tribulations, there'll be signs. But it will be not your trouble. Come to pass, and your life will be eternal when you dwell with him at last. There'll be nation against nation, there'll be wars and wars of wars, there'll be great signs in heaven in the sun, the moon, and the stars. All the hearts of men shall fail them, there'll be gnashing on their feet. Those who seek it will receive it mercy. Yeah, there are trials and tribulations. Why I played that 
particular recording is because we're in the book of Revelation, and the book of Revelation is full of trials and tribulations. It tells us about the trials and tribulations that has happened to the saints down through centuries by the evil spirit. And he that has an ear, you know, there's a lot of people, we all have ears, most of us anyway, but some people don't really hear what the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit created everything in the universe. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. He became the life-giving spirit. And it was he, the Bible said, that created everything that there is in heaven, earth, and throughout the universe. And that he is telling us, he's the Holy Spirit. He says, you that have an ear to hear spiritual things, those of you that really believe that the Lord created everything with his word by the Spirit, he says, let him hear what the Holy Spirit, the creator of everything, says unto the churches. Now, he that overcomes, he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Well, when you first get saved, that means your old life becomes dead because you're a new creature in Christ Jesus, and you have to continue to the end in the Holy Spirit. But there's a lot of people that are hurt by the second death. They die once unto their old life, and they never die again unless they backslide. And those that hear what the Holy Spirit says will never backslide because they follow the Lord, the Spirit of God. Not by power or might, but by my Spirit. Everything is by my Spirit, saith the Lord. And therefore, we have to pay attention to what the Holy Spirit says. So he says, have an ear, let him, a person that has the Spirit, hear what the Holy Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh, he that listens to the Holy Spirit and not the world, not to the spirit of Satan, not to the spirit of the Nicolaitans, but he that overcometh, all these things shall not be hurt of the second death. Well, even though we are born again of the Spirit and we've been dead once, we've died out to the things of the world in our old life, we're going to die again. Everybody has to die. It's appointed unto man once to die. That's our physical bodies. And after death, the judgment. But people that backslide, they're going to be hurt by the second death. But those of us, when we die, we will not be hurt by the second death because we are born of the Spirit and we've continued on to the very day that we die. And therefore, we are part and have consistently been part of the life world, the eternal life world, the world of the people, the realm of heaven. And therefore, we are now forever saved. But those that don't continue on to the end, they will be hurt by the second death. You hurt yourself today if you've fallen away from the Lord because you're going to be hurt. And what an understatement it seems to me to be hurt. Hurt means in hell and the lake of fire forever, screaming your head off without any relief, without any antidote. Verse 12 and to the angel of the church in Pergamos, write, semicolon, these things saith he which has this sharp sword with two edges. Why is it so important to say two edges? Because it works both ways. If you do what the Lord says, the one edge of the sword will just bless you all the days of your life and get you into the kingdom of heaven. But if you don't, the sword will come down and kill you. It'll destroy you. So it's got two edges. One if you do right and one if you do wrong. Now that's uh, very important to know. The Bible says here are the blessings. This is the sword saying that. The spirit, the double-edged sword, the word of God. And then he says, now here are the cursings. That's the other side of the sword. Amen? Yeah. All right. So he that has an ear, let him hear what I'm telling you that the word of God says. Verse 13, the Lord says, I know thy works, 
and where thou dwellest. I know everything about you. I know where you live. I know your works. I know what you've done. I'm commanding you for it. I know your works and where you you dwell. I know where your dog dwells, your cat dwells. I know every mouse in your house. I know every bug on you. I know any disease that's in your body. I know everything about you. I know where you're dwelling, even where Satan's seat is. Now, the Bible says that the city of the seven hills is where Satan's seat is. But this Rome, is that city, has reached out throughout the world and has enveloped the world into the deeds of the Nicolaitans, the evil, the deeds of Satan. So he says this is Satan's seat, where Satan sits. Dictating, if you will, the things of this world to make sure that you all are infested with the knowledge of the Nicolaitans and also the deeds of the Nicolaitans. And if you don't, well, we'll just kill you. Now, I'm saying that it's all right for children to have sex in school, is what the devil is saying. These are Nicolaitans saying, we provide your child with condoms and birth control pills. And therefore, you know, uh, this is the deeds of Nicolaitans, and the Lord hates it, and he hates the spirit that is involved here, okay? He knows where you dwell, even with Satan's seed is, and so now Satan sits, sits everywhere in the world because it's like an octopus, you know, he's got like hundreds of arms reaching throughout the world. Avril Manhattan, who has commended me, and... Uh, <laughs> exalted my piece of literature called The Pope's Secrets. He sent me a wire saying, bravo, and he's one of the best writers that I've ever known in the world, from England. And he stated that he was saying bravo because I exposed the Vatican. And this is where Satan's seat is, and I know your works and where thou dwellest even, and I'm telling you where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name. You're saying that I am the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Lord is saying, and has not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas, which means against everything, was my faithful martyr. Okay, a people that are really of the Lord, they are really against everything in this world. You're not against it. Things that you hold dear and dear to your hearts, your little cotton-picking hearts. So this Antipas was my faithful martyr. Faithful because he was against everything in the world. Why? Because the world is condemned, folks. The Lord came into the world not to condemn it because it's already condemned because of Eve. And then, of course, Adam. She was Satan's first evangelist, and she evangelized her uh, husband, and he went for it, just like you are. But Antipas was my faithful martyr. He was against everything in the world, just as I am. Everything. There just isn't anything that pleases me in this world. Who was slain among you because he hated everything, and people said, this man is so full of hate. Well, Jesus hates it too. Amen? Amen? Otherwise, the world would not be condemned. So we're in the world, but we're not of the world, the Bible says. So you have to remember that always, that you are not to be a part of this world. You're in it as pilgrims. We're like pilgrims passing through. Pilgrims passing through. We're in the world, but we have to abstain from all the lusts in the world. You can hear different people say, well, you know, God is a Jew, a weasel, and he says, here's sex, but you can't have it. Here's all kinds of food, but you can't have it. Here's drugs, but you can't have it. Here's homosexuality, but you can't do it. All these things, you know, that's right, because these are evil lusts. But he says you can be buried and have sex. I was uh, down on Rodeo Drive talking to a shopkeeper there. He says, "White guy, you can't drink. It's bad for you. You can't take drugs. It's bad for you. You can't go out with women and have 
free sex because it's bad for you could catch AIDS. Yeah, 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 all those things. But it's against the Lord. Worse than AIDS is eternal hell. Amen? Amen. And the lake of fire. Forget about AIDS. It's the lake of fire, folks. You that have an ear, listen to what the Holy Spirit says. And then you won't be hurt by the when the time comes that you die. And what's so terrible is that you could die any minute because human flesh is very frail. Your little heart is just beating and beating every second of the day. And that could stop any, any, any instant. And then you're out into eternity and there's no coming back. So that's why we have to be so careful to let our ears hear what the Holy Spirit says. So I end up as my faithful martyr. He was martyred, murdered really, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Well, where is that? In the world. Amen. Satan dwells in the world. Well, his seat is in Rome. Well, I have a chair here in Los Angeles, and I have one in Arkansas. I have one in Texas. I've got seats all over the place, but uh, my doctrine is all over the world. Amen? Amen? It's being preached everywhere. Well, where Satan dwelleth, he dwells everywhere in this world, and so does the Lord. But the Lord is far more powerful. How could the one that God created be more powerful than God? Amen? Amen. Satan, actually, it was Lucifer that the Lord created. But when he was cast out of heaven, when he uh, usurped authority over God, he began being called Satan and that devil and the great red dragon, the devil. Different names. Lucifer was the first name. Verse 14, but I have a few things against you. Why? Because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things, sacrifice unto idols, and to commit fornication. Well, let's dissect this. But I have a few things against you, because thou hast there them in your church that hold the doctrine of Balaam. In other words, you hate the brothers and sisters. You're still walking in darkness, and you're calling on God to destroy them. I hate that witch. I hate that person. I don't like the way they chew food. I hate it. I just just got so much hate in me. That means you're just so full of darkness. So he says, you hold the doctrine of Balaam. Balaam would pray against the children of God. I just can't stand him. I can't be around him. I'd rather leave the church than to be around. Well, it's the darkness in you that's causing you to. It's your own fault because you don't do what the Lord said. Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, because they hated the children of Israel so much that they actually paid, that he paid to have somebody pray against them to God to destroy them. Well, are we supposed to do that? Absolutely not. We're supposed to preach the gospel. Now, you've got one of the foremost, and it's happening in our churches, the true churches where the children of the Lord really are, but we see that in these people that call this uh, churches, the Vatican and other cults, they hate the true people of the Lord. They hate the children of Israel. And we who are born again of the Spirit are the children of Israel. And they want us to eat things, sacrifice unto idols. And they want us to get worldly, just like us and the Latter-day Saints and other churches, they want us to take part in the world. They don't even let their children watch TV. You better believe I don't. And I commend the people of the Latter-day Saints Church. I'm not a part of that church, but if they are of the Lord, I am. We're, We're brothers and we're sisters. And I defend them. I stand up for them. 
because these troopers are evil. They're wicked. They go in there, and they're saying, well, we were ordered to do that. We were ordered to do that. We would have never done that on our own. But if you follow wicked people to hurt the children of the Lord, then you're causing them to eat things, sacrifice unto idols. In other words, to do the things that are worshiping the world. Now that your idols, there's so many things in the world that you idolize. You take part in the things of the world. And you partake in these sacrifices that are sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Well, fornication is a committing fornication against the Lord. He says, don't do it. Listen to what the Holy Spirit says unto you, churches. And if you will do the things that the Holy Spirit is telling you to do, well, then you will not be hurt by the second death. But if you could think that you're Christians and you're doing things, you're lusting after the things of the world, and you're praying against and reporting people that are real Christians, even a harlot, Rahab, would not turn in the children of God, the two spies. And because of that, God made her part of the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. She repented of her sins and became part of Israel. Israel, the true Israel, are the ones that do what the Lord tells them to do. So I uh, says, so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans? There it is again, which thing I hate, the Lord says. So the doctrines of the Nicolaitans are, let's murder babies because it's your body and you have a right to do it. No, the baby is not your body. All right. And there's uh, millions of people that would love to adopt children. If you want to avoid murdering a baby, then have the baby and give the baby to somebody else. Because you're the one that committed fornication in the first place to have the baby, or you and your wicked husband have decided if we're pregnant, you got to go get an abortion. Or if you committed fornication, we don't want the baby because I don't even know who it's the father because of these wenches today are not having sex with everybody, and they're bragging about it. There's no shame, and the Lord hates that. These are the deeds of the Nicolaitans, and the deeds of the Nicolaitans are the ones that are falsely accusing people. And I went through the whole thing on yesterday's tape. And there's this, like, every worldly thing is the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Whorehouses, houses of prostitutions, booze bar, where you just in there getting drunk. Now, it's not wrong, you know, if you can have a glass of wine now and then, if it doesn't harm you. But to be drunk, the Bible says that no drunkard shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, Jesus was there at the wedding at Cana of Galilee, and he turned the water into wine. And so, therefore, we see that a little wine is okay. But in this day and age, uh, people should abstain from being drunk because if you're drunk, then you are not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. No drunkard shall enter the kingdom of heaven. So it's not a disease. God would never send people to hell for a disease. This is a self-inflicted thing. You love alcohol. You love to be drunk. You love drugs. And you can be just as drunk on uppers, downers, inners, outers, pot, pills, morning glory seeds, smashed up bananas and dried up and smoked them sniffing glue, gas, all these things. So hast thou also them in your church that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. I don't have anybody in my church that I know of that holds the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, that believes in evil, which thing God hates, that Jesus hates. Verse 16, so the Lord is telling this church to repent or else I will come unto thee quickly. Now, these are the end times when the Lord says quickly. He means instant. Now, repent of evil, of the things that I say not to do. Otherwise, I'm going to take you out quick, and we'll fight against them with the sword of my mouth, with the word of my mouth. And that's what I'm fighting Satan with, is the word of the Lord's mouth. That's my uh, weapon. That's the only weapon I have, is the word of God. 
that's the only weapon anybody in this church has, is the word of God. Contrary to what Dr. Phil says, he says, I hear that Pastor Alamo has guns. Well, that's the deed of the Nicolaitan, because what he's doing is trying to spread hatred against myself, the people in my church, and the word that I preach. I say that I, we don't have any guns, and we've been raided by uh, cops down through the years, and they've never even found a water pistol in our church. Okay, so... Dr. Philip, you are a dirty, bald-faced liar. You could say, to get off the hook, I heard, but those are just cleverly devised words of yours. And then you had a guy sitting in the audience saying, that's bad, that's bad. Yeah, it would be bad if we were doing it, but we're not doing it, Dr. Phil. I hear you're having problems with your wife, so she wants to sue you for divorce. But I pray that I hate your deeds, but I'd sure love to see you saved. And your wife, too. I'd love to see you born again of the Spirit so you'd stop lying and committing fornication on your wife. She's upset with that. And you said, well, that's just life. That's just the way it is. That isn't the way it is. That's the way it is So you people of the world. But that isn't what the Lord likes. He says he hates it. And he said for you to repent, repent or else I will come unto you quickly. Now, how could he come unto you quickly if I hadn't told you first? So by my telling you, I've warned you, and the Lord has warned you, and now you know. So repent, or the Lord's going to come unto you quick, quick like a bunny. Okay? He's going to come unto you quickly, and we'll fight against them with the sword of my mouth, which is the word of God. Now, verse 17, he that hath an ear. Oh, those of you that are not worldly, that really are interested in going to heaven, then you'll have a spiritual ear. Let him hear what the Holy Spirit saith unto the churches. Now, if you won't listen to the Holy Spirit that created heavens and earth and the fullness thereof, who will you listen to? The only other person that you would listen to would be Satan, from Satan's seat and his seats all over the world. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit saith because then you're safe. So he's saying, the Spirit says unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. Oh, there's hidden manna. Yeah, there's word of God in the Bible that no one can get hold of unless they're keeping the commandments of the Lord. So it's the Lord's glory to hide something, but it's the glory of the kings. The uh, God has made us kings and priests to seek these things out. And so God, to those of you that keep the commandments, and the Lord has shown me the truth, the way, the truth, and the life, which is him, it's like he's shown me so much manna, or the bread of life, overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden bread, the bread of life. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word of God that proceeds from the mouth of God. And the Lord says that my body is manna. It's the bread of life. So you must eat my flesh, my manna, which is the bread of life, and drink my blood. Because the manna is the word of God and is the blood of God. Now there's life is in the blood and the life is in the manna, the word of God. And the life is in the spirit of God. So the word of God contains its spirit and it is life. And the blood of Jesus takes away your sins and the life is in the blood. So all three have the life in them. To those that overcome will I give to eat of the hidden manna. Oh my God, we'll be able to read the Bible and to just get more and more power from the hidden manna. The manna that nobody else knows about. Hallelujah! Isn't that wonderful? Amen. The hidden manna, and we'll give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Well, this white stone, what's that? That is the stone, the pure. You stand on that solid rock, Christ Jesus, which is the word of God. So we receive to him that eats the hidden manna, and because of the fact that you're eating hidden manna, the Lord gives you a white stone. This is the pure word of God. And 
in the stone a new name written. And that name is Overcomers, because the Word of God, we that overcome, overcome by the Word of God. Amen? Amen. And by the blood of the Lamb and the Word of our testimony. And our testimony is the Word of God and the hidden Word of God, which is the stone that keeps us standing firm in the Lord. You want to stand F-I-R-M, firm in the power in the Word of God. The Word of God is power. The Word of God created everything, and therefore it's very powerful, and we need it in us. So a new name written which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Now you can know the meaning of that by me telling you, but you can't really know it. You can't really know it's saving he that receiveth it. So if you don't receive it, you don't really know what the Bible is saying. Amen? Amen. So I can tell you that the stone, the name, and there's the overcomers. The overcomers, because they're standing on the solid rock, and they're seeking the hidden manna, and they're doing what the Lord says so they can receive the hidden manna, the hidden bread of life. And for that, the Lord gives you a white stone, because it's pure. It's pure white. White is always symbolized with pureness. Black is always, uh, you know, to get the NAACP, I'm not talking about skin color, but white happens to be that which is pure and holy and godly, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. So if you don't receive what I'm saying, you cannot know it. You're not going to get the white stone. You're not going to be able to eat from the hidden life, the hidden manna. And we need every hidden thing. God hides it, and it's the glory of kings to find it out, to seek it out. Amen? Amen. That's what the Bible says. Okay, now, verse 18. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write these things, saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, which means that he sees everything. I mean, everything is illuminated unto him. He knows your intents of your heart, what your intentions are. He says only God knows the time of the end, exactly, the day that it's going to end. Now that Jesus is in heaven and he's raised higher than God, and he is the word of God, he knows the time. Okay, some people are talking about when he was in his flesh, when he was the son of man, that he didn't know the time. But the Father does, and now he and the Father are one. And his feet are like fine brass. So in Thyatira, these things saith the Son of God, which is God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Now, fine brass is very powerful. It's hard to destroy. You can't destroy the Lord. He says in verse 19, I know thy works. Yeah, I know the good things you're doing and your charity and service and faith. You serve me, not people, but me, and your faith and thy patience, which is a virtue, and thy works. And the last, in other words, your works, is the more than the first. Verse 20, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. This is why judgment begins first at the house of the Lord. The Lord is telling the churches that he's going to judge you with these things here. He sees things wrong with the church. The church has not perfected itself yet. They haven't sought the hidden manna, the hidden bread, the hidden bread of life. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest. That woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. This is the Vatican. She calls herself a prophetess, but really what she is is a political hate organization that is destroying the whole world. The Bible states that when Satan is thrown down into hell, that the people that are there will look at her narrowly, at this satanic being, and say, so you're, you look like a little frog-like spirit. So you're the one that destroyed the earth? Yes. So Jezebel, who calls herself, she's self-appointed prophetess, a prophetess. 
to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. All the things, it's just part, it's just um, Jezebel is the one that is the, uh, and Satan, because she is definitely the embodiment of Satan here on earth. And she is the actual one that is the queen of the Nicolaitans, because she calls herself a prophetess, and people believe her. Well, you know, that's to their damnation. And to seduce my servants to commit fornication, to make that, to do everything they can, you know, to worship Mary, that's fornication, because Mary is not deity, to pray to saints, this is false. To have all kinds of statues, this is totally against the second commandment. These are idol worshippers, and to eat things, sacrifice unto idols. Well, to do things that are sacrificed unto idols, that's fornication. To instill in the schools all the things that I'm talking about, to let children fornicate, to abstain from marriage, which the Lord says is the doctrine of devils. And she's not a prophetess, she's a false prophet. Eating things, sacrifice unto idols, to doing the things, teaching people to worship the world and the things that are therein. When the Bible plainly says, love not the world, but flee from the very appearance of evil. Well, I say the world is evil, so flee from it. Amen? Amen. Flee to the throne of God. We're supposed to be sitting there with him in heavenly places, and that's where you're supposed to be day and night saying, Holy, Holy, Holy God Almighty, Lord, show us the way, show us what to do, show us what not to do. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord, help people that are being persecuted and prosecuted by this evil Jezebel. She commits fornication. And Lord, stop this nonsense. But we have to, as Christians, speak out against those that are handing out condoms to little pre-teenage girls and boys. And we have to stop them from murdering babies. And we have to do things that we can by preaching the word of God, warning people that God's going to come upon them quickly. Jesus is going to take their lives. He's going to take them out into eternity, judge them and sling them into hell, and then later into the lake of fire. Verse 21, And I, Jesus, gave her space to repent. In other words, I sent my preachers and teachers and evangelists, and I sent all my people with my word, giving them space to repent of her fornications, the evil deeds that she keeps doing. And she repented not. She didn't repent. She's still doing the thing. She's still persecuting and prosecuting the saints, the Lord's people. Verse 22, Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her, all you Catholics and false religionists, into great tribulation, except they repent of the Lord of their deeds. I hate their deeds. I don't hate them. I'm still offering repentance to them. Amen? Amen? If you repent, then I won't do that, but I'm going to. And then he goes on to say, Jesus does, verse 23, and I will kill her children with death. Uh oh you know that God can't lie. You know that Jesus is the truth. And so when he tells you that, that's it. So repent. We have mercy on you. Jesus and all his people, his children, have mercy on you. And we're telling you, warning you that he's going to do this. So repent and you'll be saved. And he says, and I will kill her children of this Jezebel, this Nicolaitans, the head of the Nicolaitans, this Satan, with death and all the churches shall know then that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. Because you may have adultery and fornication and all these things in your heart. And when he kills you, you're going to know then that he knew all about you. You may be lusting after lesbians or other women if you're a woman and men if you're a man. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. So we have to do works. Now, we know that Satan and his people are out there doing evil works. And the Lord wants us to do godly works because we're going to be judged by the works that we do. And so why do some of us have to preach the gospel and put up with the persecution and everything, and some not? 
That's false doctrine. We all have to take our part in the body of Christ and do what the Lord says. Amen? Amen. Okay, because we're going to be judged by work, not by being idle. Verse 24, but unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have, not this Nicolaitan or Jezebelian doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, and just uh, naive as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. I'll take you out into eternity because you are not able to stand against Satan because you're naive. You don't know what's happening to you. Verse 25. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. And I'm a coming soon. <laughs> and praise the Lord. Make uh, no doubt about that. Verse 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works. Well, what are your works? Well, we saw that you healed blind eyes. You cast out devils. You led people to salvation. He that overcometh and keepeth my works, that he healed people unto the end. You have to do it till the end. Now, this is me, Jesus, talking. The one that created everything, and I created you, and I created salvation. I died on the cross and made it possible for you to be saved. So everyone who overcometh and keeps my works, not just say my word, but you get out there and win souls unto the end. You have to do it to the end. To him will I give power over the nations. Whoa! So he's going to give us power over the nations. Yeah, I rule this world. And God, when I go out of this body, and he changes my body into an ecclesiastical body, he's going to give me portions or a large area of heaven to rule for him, according to his word, because he trusts me because I believe his word, and I believe I have the power over the nations. Verse 27, and he shall rule, and I shall rule them with a rod of iron, the word of God, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. All right, so we are like potters, so to speak, because it's the Lord in us, and he's the potter, and we're doing what he says that we have to do. And so, therefore, we're molding the lives of people. We're molding them with the word of God. We're like potters molding different people. And then some of the people don't receive the molding. And therefore, we break them. The word breaks them. The word of God just comes down and breaks them. And we start with other pottery. So that's all we are is pottery. Now, I see that our time has gone on this particular program. So we have to now read some letters. So where's the first one from? It's the continuation of the letter from Rosebud, Arkansas. Okay, go ahead. This is regarding putting Pastor Lama's true life story on video. It says, Dixie will do the best and work the best quality to show you in a light becoming your real self instead of degrading you and your ministry. She well, you know, we are degraded and it's to our glory and that's it. Well, we'll be exalted in heaven where the people that are degrading us will be abased. They'll be in hell screaming out forever. Then what? She could still find several known country stars could include to uphold... Okay, your this isn't uh, important. Let's go on to another letter. Okay, this is from Ghana, Africa. To Evangelist Tony Alamo, greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. I have been listening to your programs for a long time, which has enabled me to receive salvation and strength in my faith. It's a pleasure to listen to direct truth about the prophecies of God being taught in these last days. I thank God that you preach it without hiding any truth. Please send me some Bibles and Christian literature for me being a Sunday school teacher and also youth leader. Thank you with Christian love. Yours faithfully, N. Richard from Sefwi, Asawinso, Ghana, Africa. We have about a half a minute if you got a short one. Yes, from the Ivory Coast. I admire and I often read the teachings about the Messiah. You are doing a lot of good for those who are reading this. The Messiah is a book that I've written. It's in about 40 different languages now. Order is free of charge. Then what else? May the Lord help you to do more from Kamara from Abidjan, Ivory Coast, Africa. Right, okay, the Messiah book tells of the 333 prophecies of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, and it's yours free of charge. We have it in Greek, Spanish, Japanese, Chinese, of course, English, and uh, the different Latin languages, and French. 
and uh, it's yours free of charge. Uh, just call, ask us for the Messiah book. Very good tool in winning people to the Lord. Many atheists have been saved from that, and also witch doctors and Muslims, all types of people. We have to believe in the Lord in order to have everlasting life. We must hear what the Spirit of the Holy God that created everything says unto all of us. Well, right now is the time to pray. Now, you're either going to accept the Lord or reject him. There's no two ways. You can say, well, I want to wait until later. That's rejecting the Lord. Because you never know when the next opportunity will come for you to be able to receive him. And so don't turn him away now or don't reject him, because if you reject him, he'll reject you before his Father and the holy angels. So say unto the Lord now, so you can have the Lord living in you, Say this prayer. Say, My Lord and my God, have mercy upon my soul, a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And I believe that he died on the cross and shed his precious blood for the forgiveness of all my former filthy sins. And I believe that you, Father God, raised Jesus from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. I open the door of my heart and I invite you into my heart, Lord Jesus, Holy Father, Holy Spirit. Jesus, I ask you to wash all the former filthy sins that I committed in my life away in the precious blood that you shed for me on the cross at Calvary. You will not turn me away, Lord Jesus. You will save my soul. I know because your word says so. Your word says that you'll turn no one away, and that includes me. All that call upon the name of the Lord, your word says, all shall be saved. Therefore, I know that you have heard me, and I know that you have answered me, and I know that I'm saved. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my eternal, everlasting soul. Now, just raise your hands and praise and thank the Lord for it. And share and tell everyone in Radio Land, in our listening audience, how to receive a copy of this tape or CD, free of charge, Program 757. Go to alamuministries.com. Email us at taoffice at alamoministries.com or write to Tony Alamo Christian Ministries, P.O. Box 2948, Hollywood, California, 90078, or call area code 661-252-5686. That's 661-252-5686. This is World Pastor Tony Alamo saying tune in tomorrow for another extremely enlightening message from the Word of God. I have received so much of the hidden manna, and you'll receive it by listening. Right now, I'm going to sing a song for you. Now, the mountains in the Bible have many times been metaphors of nations. And there's a holy nation. It's the kingdom of heaven. It's the actual kingdom. It is called Crystal Mountain in this song. So I'd like to sing it for you. It's way up high. There's this heavenly nation, this Crystal Mountain. Way up high, there's a Crystal Mountain higher than the eagles fly, where love is flowing. Like a fountain where the soul will never die, and it's free.
within. This crystal mountain shines the light to guide the way. Just look and you will find it loves the only price you pay. Come with me. Come with me. Up to this mountain. Oh